please pray with me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When I was younger, my parents worked. Now, when I was a lot littler, my mom stayed home, um, and she only worked part-time so that she could be with us in the afternoons and get us to school and, um, and be present for us. But once we got older in high school, she got a full-time job, too. And so we were very lucky. They worked enough to make enough money for what we needed. We always had food and clothes, and, and, um, and we got to do some fun things um, with my family. Um, but we didn't have a ton, and, um, and, and what we had extra, they saved away. But when I got to college, even though they had saved and we had enough for what we needed, we didn't have enough to pay for the full four years. Basically, my parents made too much money for need-based scholarships, um, but they didn't make enough to pay for, to save up for all four years. And so, I had to apply for scholarships, lots and lots and lots of scholarships, because my dad was a guidance counselor in a high school. So I applied for lots and lots of scholarships, because he knew all of the ones that were available. However, uh, I chose to go to a competitive college. So again, I was good enough to apply and be accepted, but not quite good enough to get an academic or merit-based scholarship, even though I had very high grades and a number of activities on my resume. While I was disappointed, I also understood this, and I accepted it fairly well, until my friends started talking about the scholarships that they were receiving. At that time, I went to high school in a fairly high middle, high end middle class area of town, but my family lived in a little corner that was not quite as high end middle class. We were kind of the lower end of middle class. I was definitely, uh, my parents definitely didn't make as much money as most of the other people I went to school with. And, and these were the pay people that were getting scholarships. In many cases, their resumes were slightly less active than mine, and their grades were often a few points lower than mine. But they were getting the scholarships, and I wasn't. And I was confused and angry, and I didn't understand. They made more money, and they were getting the scholarships. Then I learned it was because they were at least a quarter minority. In some cases, even an eighth minority. And so I felt hurt and angry for being passed over something because of something that I had no control over. They were getting scholarships with lower merit and academic ratings than mine, and their parents made more money than mine. But because of the push to make opportunities for minors, minor youth, there were numerous, numerous scholarships available to them that weren't to me because I was in the white majority. This seemed very unfair to me. And I have to admit, unfortunately, it took me a long time to truly understand and become compassionate about this seemingly unfair event in my life. This week, our Old Testament and our Gospel readings have some similarities. They are both about God's generosity, even when, even when God's people don't deserve it. Our Old Testament reading is from the story of Jonah. Jonah receives God's grace even after he turns away and runs away from God's, uh, God, what, what he was called to do by God. And so he gets swallowed by a fish. He knew how horrible the Ninevites were. He was afraid to go, and so he disobeys God. And because he disobeys God, uh, he gets swallowed by a fish. But then, in his own actions even, he realizes he was given a second chance by God because although he was swallowed by a fish, it spit him out so that he could have a second chance, and he prayed for forgiveness and mercy. So then, after getting a second chance, he goes to the Ninevites, and he shares the messages that God wanted, him to, wanted them to hear. And the Ninevites, for all their horribleness, were so grateful and amazed that they actually changed their ways. So God did not destroy the city, just as Jonah was not digested by a fish. And yet, what was Jonah's reaction in this story? He was angry with God for giving the Ninevites grace. Of course, he felt his sin was mild compared to theirs. Of course, he should receive grace, but the Ninevites? 
Well, they were beyond help, right? They didn't deserve a, sec a second chance, right? But God said, no, Jonah, they do. And this week's gospel story is about a group of workers who were recruited by a landowner to work in the fields. In the end, some of these workers experience something that seems to them very unfair. They've put in a full day's work while another group of workers only put in an hour or two and yet they get the same pay. The landowner reminds the workers that he's not obligated to pay anyone any more than what he had told them. The normal daily wage was what he gave the early workers and that's what they had agreed to. But it was, however, his opportunity to pay others more if he so chose to be generous. We don't really know the circumstances in, of the workers in the marketplace, marketplace that day. We know that they weren't hired. Perhaps they all gathered early in the morning and some received jobs while others did not. So when the landowner came back and saw there were still people there, he gave them, op gave them an opportunity to work so they could take care of their families. Perhaps their jobs finished early and because of this they were be able to come back because they weren't going to quite make what they needed. So they return in hopes of more, and of course it's possible that some of them were lazy, that they slept in and took advantage and got really, really lucky. In any case, we can understand, however, that the workers for the morning were a little put out because they did most of the work and got paid less in their mind for what they did. But what a gift for the others to receive a day's wage unexpectedly. Perhaps not all of them, but some in the situation would recognize the great gift of grace and thankfully change their ways to follow the examples of Christ. Some of them may not have deserved that full wage, but they were given it anyway. And it makes me question, does the reason the workers weren't working earlier matter? This story doesn't differ from some of the experiences of people in our own times, does it? I can think of a number of examples like this here in our own community that are almost exactly the same. In places all over town, there are groups of people who come here looking for work from other places. They risk their lives in some cases to come to a place that might provide a little more money or safety or better opportunities for their families. There are also people who have lived here for generations but have only been able to work for minimum wage, which is not a living wage. And in these cases, their children also have to work as soon as they become old enough. They're caught in a cycle of poverty that feels impossible to break out of. But one way that people break out of poverty is through education. The struggle is if you're a child and your parent is not home to supervise you because they have to work all the time to make ends meet, it's less likely statistically that you'll succeed in school. And furthermore, if you are an older child or teenager who has to care for your siblings or work in the community before school and after school and even late, late into the night, you're also unlikely to succeed in school. My husband and my mother and father-in-law and my parents all saw this happen over and over with the children that they worked with in their schools. Additionally, even, if a child or a person wanted to succeed, the obstacles that they have to overcome are much greater than the obstacles of a person, say, like me, has. Even though I didn't have a lot of extra money growing up, I had what I needed and then some. So then I had a lot of opportunity with my time to do extra activities and outside learning with my family, which contributed to my learning and my performance, my grades in school and extracurricular activities, which led to a greater possibility for a much higher achievement level in academics and otherwise. In the US, according to a study by the Children's Defense Fund in 2021, at least one in five black children were poor in 42 states, Hispanic children in 36 states, and American Indian Alaska Native children in 29 states. But not one state had a white child poverty rate above 20%. Now, I don't want to make a political statement here about race. That's not my purpose at all. But I share these numbers because they relate to my own story from high school. They help me to understand now why it was so important for those scholarships to go to someone else. It also brings me back to the question, does the reason we're given God's grace matter? Does it matter whether we are at fault or it is 
no fault of our own. Jonah knew exactly what he was doing when he ran away, but did the Ninevites know they were wrong? And maybe the workers in the vineyard showed up late. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they were lazy, but maybe they had no control over their situation. There might not have been enough work that day. Either way, to Jesus, it would seem it didn't matter. Only what mattered was that people had what they needed. When I listen to the story of Jonah and of the parable in the vineyard and I compare it to the stories of poverty in our own culture today, it helps me understand why I didn't get those scholarships. And it also teaches me to love with the compassion and equity that Christ loves us. The workers in the morning were paid what is right. Perhaps the landowner recognized the plight of the later workers and wanted to give them equal opportunity. And to do so required him to pay more than what would have been appropriate hourly wage. But what a gift to receive what you need when you otherwise would not, whether by your own fault or not. God's sense of justice and fairness does not always look just or fair to us because often we're unable to see with the same compassion and generosity and understanding that Christ does. Thank goodness we believe in a God that looks past our understanding of fair and gives what God says is fair and right to all people. Please pray with me. Compassionate God, help us to look around and find ways to be compassionate. Teach us that we should only look at what's in another man's bowl to make sure they have enough, and not just to see if the distribution was fair or equal. Teach us to see the best in our neighbor, to recognize when things are unjust, and to work for sharing your grace and abundance with others. Finally, God, may we rejoice and celebrate the gift of your boundless grace, which you bestow in gracious and loving measure to all people, saint and sinner. Amen.